They weren't actually reacting. I'm not even gonna look at chat. I'm just pogging out. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Thanks for joining us for today's live stream as we unveil Path of Exile Crucible, which launches on April 7th on PC and Mac and on April 12th on console. They're saying louder. Twitch drops are enabled on today's live stream, so make sure you follow the instructions below in order to claim your Sphinx wings. Better chat. Speaking of live streams, this is our last dedicated Path of Exile 1 announcement stream for around six months. That's because our 322 expansion announcement will occur during the XCOM live stream in late July. Set yourself a reminder to tune in because we'll oh, also be unveiling Echo. massive amounts of information about Path of Exile 2, including revealing the date that its beta will start. Okay, back to today's live stream. Here's what you can expect. We'll start with a trailer for Crucible, followed by a deep dive on the League itself. Then we'll cover this expansion's endgame improvements, including the introduction of Atlas Gateways and Crucible of a event. Breach and Abyss go. Leagues. We'll discuss changes in Rufus, to Path of so Exile's balance metagame, including changes to the passive skill tree, its masteries, an overhaul of the Saboteur and Pathfinder ascendancy classes, nine powerful new Val skills, and some of the new unique items you can build around. After that, we'll cover improvements to the Ruthless game mode and the League launch boss kill event, before diving into the new supporter pack series. The livestream will then conclude with a Q&A session between Ziggy D and me, where we'll answer questions from Twitch chat. After the live stream, we'll drop the full patch notes. Patch notes posted. Let's get started with the trailer for Path of Exile. Here we go. Zana? Then we might get pinnacle bosses this time. So there are new bosses, all right. Hail, one of many. Zana's got a deep voice. Eons ago, my kind walked the molten surface of this world. Now, we seek a champion. Fog? Uh? You must endure the heat of the crucible. He's crafting? To forge weapons unlike any Ray class has ever seen. What? I didn't have a skill tree? They're just putting steel trees on everything now. Yeah. Take up the power of the titans. And bring obliteration. Is he unique for those steel trees? This is weapons. Are they only weapons? Maybe. Oh, they're not just weapons. I like that. I like that. Huh. That's crazy. They were already so good. What? Gateway. Oh my jewel, you did this! <laughs> That's so cool. They're gonna death class on the way. Yeah, I yeah. think. That's so cool. Yo! Log in, dude! I don't know where you get the gateways from. From the bosses, probably, maybe. Mm -hmm. In Path of Exile Crucible, you'll learn about an ancient race of titans who once shaped the primordial surface of Rayclust. In this league, you will earn the ability to forge their power onto your weapons. Yeah, I know weapons. And what form does that power take? In an iconically Path of Exile way, it's the ability to imbue your weapons with their own passive skill trees. <laughs> These crucible trees can have quite an impact on your character build. For example, in addition to the regular mods on this bow, its crucible tree grants additional physical damage, oh. physical to chaos conversion, the master Fletcher notable passive, improved grace effect, and level 10 lesser multiple projectiles. Wow. Oh my gosh. While this is certainly a decent tree to get, it's not even the maximum depth and could be even more optimized for your build. In order to forge these powerful trees onto your weapons, you'll need to complete crucible encounters. There's one in each area. Each encounter what? takes place at a Crucible Forge. As you approach the Forge, you'll have the choice of which of your Isn't equipped weapons you want to focus on. This can it, include ones on your alternate yeah, weapon sure. swap if you want to improve one you're not currently using. Ooh. After selecting a weapon, you channel it at the Crucible Forge to spawn monsters. The longer you channel for, the more dangerous and rewarding the encounter becomes. As you spawn additional monsters, they combine together to create larger and more fearsome foes that grant even more experience for your Crucible passive tree. Wow. 
being able to ramp up the difficulty of the encounters is a double-edged sword. While it gives you the opportunity to make rapid progress on your crucible weapon crafting projects, it comes with significant risk to your character. It's easy to accidentally overwhelm yourself and make an encounter that is too dangerous. Channel carefully and adapt to what your character is die. capable of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you first find a weapon, it doesn't have a crucible not, tree unlocked. <laughs> yep. Channeling that weapon at crucible encounters will unlock and reveal its tree, as well as allocating the first wow. skill. That early? You can only allocate one skill at each tree depth, so you'll need to decide which path through the tree is best for your build. Huh. As you get deeper into a tree, more and more experience is required to unlock skills. The final depths can take quite an investment and can only be found rarely on endgame items, but also have some of the most powerful properties. For example, this wand has two depth 5 skills to choose from. Potion? One of them allows all damage from your freezing pulse and eye of winter skills to poison, wow. and the other allows various brands to be attached to your summoned reaper. There are many wow. such modifiers to skills that will enable very interesting build combinations. That's actually cool. In wow! To all types of weapons, shields can also be empowered with their own crucible trees. Oh! Here's a relatively simple low-level example. It gets a bit crazier as you approach the endgame. Speaking of the endgame, in endgame crucible encounters, you'll occasionally find igneous geodes, currency items that can be cracked open to reveal a primeval remnant. This is a map-like item that grants access to the Forge of the Titans, the culmination of your Crucible journey. These primeval remnants always generate as rare items. Half of their mods are upsides yeah. and half are downsides. The upsides generally increase the rewards of the area or add special crafting options. For example, causing monsters to drop divination cards or magmatic ore, a form huh. of tradable itemized Crucible tree experience. The downsides are quite punitive compared to most in-game maps. Ideally, you'll want to find a primeval remnant that is really rewarding upsides alongside downsides you can handle. If you don't think you'll survive a visit to the Forge of the Titans, trade the remnant away to someone else and gamble on cracking open another geode. Trade players will love if that. If you survive and manage to reach the end of the area, you'll find the aforementioned Forge, which allows you to merge crucible trees on two items together. The way this process works is that you provide two items of the same class. For example, a pair of bows, a pair of shields, or a pair of one-hand axes. One of these items will be melted down and applied to the other, which will keep its regular properties. Their crucible trees will be merged together in an unpredictable way, taking elements of each one. This is a little reminiscent of how recombinators applied to item mods, taking wow. parts of each crucible tree and merging them together, as well as randomly upgrading, downgrading, or mutating skills on the resultant tree. Wow. While this process can create some really powerful trees if you get skills you wanted from both items, it can also completely wreck your precious trees. So take care choosing which you risk combining. Huh. Also, like okay. recombinators, there are ways to manipulate the system to improve your odds at getting certain outcomes. Oh. For example, any skills that have been allocated are more likely to show up in the resultant crucible tree. Oh, that's smart. I like that. By default, you can only add crucible trees to non-unique items, but it's possible to get a mod on the Forge of the Titans map that allows you to imbue a unique item with a crucible <laughs> tree, which can then be leveled up via regular crucible encounters. To combine crucible trees on unique items together, you'll want to find a crystalline geode and crack it open to reveal the secret higher level version of the Forge of the Titans. I probably shouldn't say too much about it, but it will let you do some interesting things with crucible trees. There's an important thing to note about crucible trees on unique weapons. In addition to being much harder to unlock, there's a special rule about how they can be combined. A unique weapon must be combined with another copy of the same unique weapon to merge their trees together. Because this destroys one copy, getting a good crucible tree on a unique weapon makes it insanely valuable. It may also raise the trade value of all unique weapons by quite a lot, as players sacrifice them That's trying cool to create thing. perfect I like crucible that. trees. Wow. Occasionally, you'll find a crucible passive skill tree with a special skill that indicates that the item will sell to vendors for a specific item in addition to its regular sale price. Huh. These vendor skills usually occur relatively deeply in the tree, so take some effort wow. to allocate, but usually don't block skill choices you'd make when leveling the item up for use. It's gonna be a tilter on the your end game of items. These skills presents you with an interesting choice about whether you want to use the item or sell it to a vendor, and whether you want to spend your crucible experience either revealing new trees to hunt for good skills leveling up items to use, or leveling up items to sell. Very clever. Crucible also features its own unique items you can earn. Yeah. For example, El Abin's Visage, a unique helmet, is special in that it's the only armor piece other than shields that can receive Crucible passive skill trees. Wearing it allows you to double the rest of the so bad. that are only available through these trees. There are several other unique items exclusive to Crucible for you to discover in this league. 
Crucible is a dual combat crafting league with a focus on encounter difficulty scaling and deep weapon customization with a power level that we have never seen before. Without a doubt, some of Path of Exile's most powerful weapons will be forged in Crucible. We can't wait to see what you manage to create. Nice. Mm. Like all recent Path of Exile expansions, oh. Crucible includes a lot of changes hey, with the goal of improving Path of Exile's endgame. One area we wanted to address was mobility on the Atlas Passive Tree. Often, you'll find yourself in a situation where you want to specialize in leagues that are on entirely different sides of the Atlas Tree. Or maybe you want to focus on the type of altar that isn't near the leagues you have picked. To solve this, Path of Exile Crucible introduces Atlas Gateways. These are nodes that you can allocate on the Atlas Tree that allow instant travel between two locations. There are three pairs of gateways, each allowing travel from the left side of the tree to the right side, or vice versa. Each end of the gateway consumes one Atlas skill point to I don't allocate, think you need to do will potentially save you large amounts of travel points. Just, it's just nice. It's just there. In this it's expansion, nice. we're targeting Quality a couple of endgame yep. leagues that have fallen behind other leagues on the Atlas tree. Let's start with Breach. In the live version of Path of Exile, there are five tiers of Breach Stone. Uh -oh. In Path of Exile Crucible, we're raising the area levels of Breach Stones to a much higher baseline level. 81 for elemental ones, 82 for physical, and 83 for chaos. Now that the regular breach stones are much higher level, we have retired, charged, and rich oh, pure breach stones. They will be converted to regular ones. We have also changed how flawless breach stones are acquired. Previously, you could only get them from Maven invitations, but we prefer access to the hardest breach content to actually come from playing breach. Oh shit! Now there are two ways to get flawless breach stones: through blessings, which are now rarer as a result, and through a skill on the Atlas Tree. Wow. Wow. We've also improved the pacing of breach encounters. Previously, breaches felt pretty good early on, but quickly tapered off in density to the point where you wanted to abandon the breach because it just felt like not enough monsters were spawning. Oh, we're gonna die. Our changes now keep breaches feeling dense throughout, leaning more on the side of it feeling overwhelming towards the end of the breach. We've also reduced the duration of breaches so there is constant monster pressure and you can get on with your mapping sooner. There are a whole bunch of other breach changes that you can read about in the patch notes, such as Safe. changes to the Betrayal Research Safe House, Breach Scarabs, Breach Stones from Kirik Missions, the Breach Harvest Crafting Option, the Fragment Stash Tab, Divination Cards, Breach Unique Items, Atlas Passives, and so on. We're also revamping Abyss in a similar way. Abyssal Depths now always contain an Abyssal Lich. Previously, the prevailing gameplay was to check the loading screen art of an Abyssal Depths to see if it contained a Lich and bail out if it didn't. Now, the depths always contain a Lich, removing the need for this step. Oh. While the rate of encountering Abyssal Liches is unchanged, Abyssal Depths are rarer than before. However, Abysses now have a chance to spawn a Stygian Spire in place of their reward chest, which will drop right. all of the jewels and other items you'd normally receive, as well as a Stygian oh. Vice. In addition, you're guaranteed to always get a four-hole Abyss alongside your Abyssal Depths. Previously, Abyssal Depths could only spawn immediately after a single Abyssal Hole, which prevented you from getting full value from the Abyss. Wow. The Lightless Legion notable passive has been replaced with a new skill which grants Stitch and Spires in your maps drop items with kind plus one to too. item level. This what? is intended to allow players no, to continue to, to be able to obtain item level 86 Stitch and Spires and, and other base types as a reward for specializing in Abyss. The small passives leading up to this notable passive have also been replaced. We've done a balance pass on Abyssal Lich encounters to make them more appropriately difficult relative to the current standard of endgame encounters. Uh -oh. Abyss Uniques have had some balance attention also, and the details are in the patch notes. Overall, these changes should ensure you can play a wider variety of leagues in the endgame, both through being able to access them more easily and because Breach and Abyss now feel far more modern and competitive with other popular league content. A big goal of the Crucible expansion is to provide a lot of new ways to build characters and to breathe new life into older builds. To achieve this, we're doing two things. Firstly, we have created many more interesting options for one of Path of Exile's core build systems, the passive skill tree, by overhauling many of its masteries. Secondly, we have revamped two specific ascendancy classes. As we reviewed the masteries on Path of Exile's passive skill tree, we realized that a lot of the choices were rather bland and could be a lot more exciting. We but... went through the masteries one by one and tried to come up with as many interesting stats as we could, ignoring what was currently there. Once we had a short list of high quality stats, we added in the existing ones that used to be on each mastery and picked the six best. All of the leftover ones have been saved for later or used in places like unique items. Hmm. This process was performed on approximately half of the masteries on the tree, wow. initially targeting the ones that needed the attention the most. Previously, some masteries only had four options, so we've tried to increase as many as possible to six options. 
we've also added a couple of new mastery types that we felt were missing. Let's look at an example, Still the there? life mastery choices. You can see some of the interesting new options, such as the ability to manipulate your low life wow. and full life thresholds, which allows you to more effectively use the damage while on full life support the full life and is many unique huge. items. Nice. Getting a large increase to maximum life when you have no life on your body armor not only works really well with a whole lot of unique items, but also opens up new prefix composition wow. options for rare body I like armors. That. that one's huge as well. Here you can see the armor and energy shield mastery has more options available than before. The other thing we focused on with this one is tying the mechanics together Chaos better. Seven. Instead of some being about armor and some being about energy shield, we've tried to make sure each Good really emphasizes well. having both armor and energy shield. Wow. On the leech mastery, we've combined the three increases. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? The space we freed up has been used to yeah, add some powerful new options, too. such as a portion of your leech <laughs> applying instantly. Well, that's mandatory. The spell suppression mastery also has many interesting options. Your chance to suppress spell damage becoming lucky is extremely useful before you've optimized your gear and haven't reached 100% yet. Wow. The third option rewards you for stacking more than 100% spell suppression, which previously had few benefits. Now it's something you can plan your itemization around. The immunity to rapid While hits. looking at masteries, we noted that there were some mechanics that didn't have enough passive tree support, so we decided to add some more options and passive skill choices for those mechanics. We also wanted to grant more access to certain types of masteries in specific parts of the passive skill tree. For example, in order to allow more access to the attack mastery, we've added an attack cluster by the Templar, and one between the Ranger and Shadow. Nice. We wanted to create more access to sick. other forms of recovery, such as regen and recoup, so we've added some new passive skill clusters. Note that there is now a new mastery called recovery. Wow. We've I also like added more capacity for investment in certain mechanics like that, that we felt could be improved, <laughs> oh, yeah, such as link skills, links. stun mitigation, and marks. These mastery improvements and passive tree changes are just some of the ones introduced in Path of Exile Crucible. We look forward to your feedback on the rest when you check out the passive skill tree next week. Wow. That's huge. While wow. going through That's ascendancy just... classes, That's we fun. identified two that needed work, the Saboteur and the Pathfinder. Both have been significantly changed in Path of Exile Crucible. They didn't say These changes they reinforce didn't say their respective identities while adding some new options to build around. The Saboteur is definitely the ascendancy class most aligned with traps and mines. The old version damage. of the Saboteur made it difficult to play anything but traps or mines. The new version has more builds available, including a whole new specialization, Triggers. There are two notable passives oh. that help with this. Like Clockwork grants you the increased wow. cooldown recovery rate stat, which is a pretty rare one. This That's is great cool. for triggered spells as it indirectly increases well, their sick. damage. This notable also makes your enemies have longer cooldowns, which can be useful in certain boss fights. For example, causing the Maven's memory game to occur less often. The Perfect Crime notable passive summons two trigger bots, which override the location of where a triggered spell is being cast, and instead causes it to trigger twice, once from each of their locations. Yo! The layout for the Saboteur's Trap and Mine Ascendancy passives has changed, so that there aren't separate four-pointers for traps and mines. Now each one has a two-pointer that is connected to the same shared four-pointer. That is way more fun! We've also completely reworked Bomb Specialist to be specifically tied to area damage, so it's a slightly more general skill. It both gives yeah. you some area damage as well as some defense against incoming area that. damage against you. The Pathfinder has been overdue for some attention, especially with recent features such as concoction skills that she could get the ability to specialize Rip. in. We also wanted the Flask Beam Descendancy to have a proactive way of improving life flask usage. Master Distiller allows you to turn most of your skills into concoction-like effects. Master Surgeon now effectively gives all of your life flasks the enduring effect, wow. previously only found on mana flasks. Finally, both of the major flask themed branches wow. now have some form Still of there. flask charge recovery. There are other improvements to the Pathfinder as such as hit, though, Nature's okay. Reprisal, now interacting with reason. Wither to improve all forms of your Show cast damage, the rather than just attack forms of it. Check out the full details in the patch notes that we'll be posting after the I don't the think they're there anymore. Path of Exile Crucible introduces nine new Val skills. Fog? Last expansion, new there skills? was an emphasis on melee Val skills. I love In Crucible, skills. we're making yeah. sure that many other types of builds get new skills to build around. Val skills let us introduce quite powerful effects that we couldn't normally give to a regular skill that can be used constantly. They also implicitly act as a buff to the underlying skill. Val Absolution upgrades one of your Sentinels of Absolution into an Apparition of Innocence. You can only have one Apparition at once, but just check out these massive AoE skills it uses. Well. 
What was this? Foul Arctic armor instantly encases Absolutely. you in ice, preventing non-instant actions, including movement, but granting massive damage reduction against hits. After uh -oh. a short duration, it also starts to regenerate your energy shield and mana at a fast rate. Wow. Both the damage reduction well, and regeneration last for a few seconds, or until you have been hit three times. Not a bit OP. It cannot be manually cancelled. Because the skill is instant, it's a great emergency button against dangerous bosses. Jesus! Lines, but also makes you count really? as being wow. frozen, I, I don't, despite I actually don't like normally that. making you freeze immune. Having another way to self-freeze may be of interest to a few mad scientist build creators in the community. Um... Val Lightning well, look has a barrage of piercing projectiles to cause lightning to strike nearby targets whenever wow. they hit an enemy. After a short amount of time, or when they collide with terrain, their arrows randomly change direction and continue flying. This occurs a number of times before the arrows expire. That looks sick. Each arrow that can hit the fun. same target once per redirect. That looks very that. Because the arrows travel for a set time before redirecting, rather than a set distance, projectile speed modifiers affect the distance traveled. High projectile speed lets you clear huge that. areas with them, while reducing Holy. your projectile speed increases the chance of them hitting the same target multiple times. With very low projectile speed, the skill can hit a single target 20 plus times. Val Reap conjures a ring of scythes that deal damage to all enemies in a circular area. The scythes leave behind a pool of blood that deals heavy physical damage over time to enemies standing huh. in it, and for a short duration after they leave it. Val Reap instantly grants a large number of the blood charges used by normal Reap on use, as well as temporarily higher maximum blood charge capacity, substantially powering up the regular version of the skill. Path of Exile Crucible introduces five other Val skills we'll reveal over the next week. Val nice. Animate Weapon, Val, Val Domination, Val Ice Shot, Huge Val meteor. Rejuvenation Totem, and Val Firestorm. This expansion also introduces more than 10 new unique items. There are three in particular I'd oh. like to show you today. Blood Price is a unique helmet that has a new effect, reserving <laughs> enemy maximum life. This does exactly what it implies, causing nearby enemies to start at 92% maximum life. While this increases your clear speed against all enemies, it's especially useful against bosses. Eh. The helmet's drawback is that it reduces your maximum life, but provides decent life regeneration and block and sun recovery no to thanks. counteract this. Tainted Pact is an amulet that causes chaos damage over time to heal you while you're leeching life. While the amulet provides a decent amount of life leech itself, it'll certainly require a few tricks to unlock its full potential. Wow. I'm dumb. Widow Hail is a unique bow that is different from any other bow in Path of Exile. As a weapon, it does basically no base damage and doesn't grant any stats of its own, but it does dramatically increase the power of mods provided by your quiver. You Needless to say, this could produce some pretty ridiculous As outcomes well. with good rare or unique so quivers. Based off stats. We will reveal some of the other new uniques over the coming week. Ruthless is a game mode that we released alongside the Sanctum expansion late last year. It's designed around extreme item scarcity and is challenging because you're constantly behind the item power. Give me mode. movement ability. So far, has found a very passionate audience of players who love how rewarding item drops feel in such an austere environment. We have some small improvements to Ruthless and Path of Exile Crucible. Movement abilities? Firstly, Eternal Orbs are back in Ruthless. These are an extremely powerful currency item that allows you to imprint an item and restore it if you're unhappy with the result of crafting. We disabled these game-wide seven years ago because they were far too powerful when combined with all of the different Makes crafting sense. options Path of Exile offered at the time. Ruthless does not have the base game's crafting feature set, so we have enabled Eternal Orbs to drop in Ruthless, albeit extremely time. rarely. Ruthless now has its own set of challenges to complete. Like the ones in early Path of oh, Exile, no. there were a total of eight, and they're very difficult. Oh no. Like we've done in the past, we're hosting a boss kill event at the start of the Crucible Challenge League. It'll be held in Ruthless Hardcore Solo self out and will require you to kill both the Uber Searing Exarch and the Uber Eater of Worlds, making it by far Did they the say hardest Uber? event we've ever said ever Ruthless had. The first and place Uber, right? We'll to work with our design team to add a new unique <laughs> item to Path of Exile. That's the dumbest the thing I've ever heard. A transferable Ultra VIP ticket to Exocon in July. Also, they mean they've lied about everything. Already have a ticket, then they are this allowed to sell like this one, one as they see fit. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. ...will receive a transferable VIP ticket to Exocon that can also be sold at their discretion. If you'd like to enter the event, just create a character in Ruthless Hardcore Solo Cell Found on launch day. Was Best it Uber? Luck to everyone. On the weekend of July 29 to 30 New Zealand time, which is July 28 to 29 for much of the rest of the world, we're going to be hosting Exocon 2023 in Auckland, New Zealand. While tickets right. for the in-person event are very hard to get, we'll be streaming the entire event for free. At Exocon, we'll reveal our latest updates on Path of Exile 2, Path of Exile Mobile, and the next Path of Exile 1 expansion. Make a note in your calendar, tell your friends, and I don't miss it. it.
The second day of the Path of Exile livestream culminates in a competitive race event between some of Path of Exile's best players. In order to select the four competitors, we're going to run qualifier events during the months of April and May. The winner of each event will receive a VIP Exocon ticket, return flights to Auckland and accommodation, and will compete in the race event live on stage. All four qualifiers in the final That's event will be run on the 321 <laughs> version of Path of Exile, which has received a fair amount of early game balance work that will change the racing meta quite a lot. You'll be able to read more in the patch notes. Once 321 releases next week, you'll be able to solve the new meta, practice hard, compete in the qualifier events, and hopefully win your place on stage in July. Alongside Path of Exile Crucible, we're introducing a few new types of microtransactions. An example I wanted to describe today is that of mannequins. These are hideout decorations that you can place to show off sets of microtransactions oh, you have assembled. That's you can equip cool. them with that's your so spare cool. micros and pose them in various ways. It's also possible that. to swap your entire outfit with a mannequin's one, which lets you easily store oh, that's micro amazing. sets to I like that, actually. later. That's literally god tier. Other new microtransactions coming up include wrapping paper, which lets you gift wrap items to hand to other players, or even drop in town for random people to pick up. What? Today uh -huh. we're launching two new series of supporter packs. The so Lizard new, no new bosses? Oh, they so. Each tier contains the pack's full face value and points, alongside several this exclusive this microtransactions. These packs are only available for the duration of the Crucible League, and will leave the store forever when it ends. As always, the microtransactions in these packs are purely cosmetic and do not affect your character's power or progression in any way. The Lithomancer series of supporter packs contains six exclusive microtransactions. The Tunnel Bear isn't just adorable, he will also take the place of the Crawler in Delves, lighting <laughs> the surroundings and laying That's amazing! Apparently, this is what happens when your bear gets into a kilo of sulfite. Might explain. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine beer! The Ring of the Demon Slayer yeah. attempts to exorcise rare and unique demons when you hit them. The souls of defeated demons are banished to the depths below. It's gonna look a bit messy. The ancient stone of the Lithomancer's armor set crumbles when you take damage, oh. revealing the crimson core inside. The stone reforms if you haven't taken damage recently. A sip from the ancestral granite flask causes a Karui ancestor to appear and surround you in protective wards. The ancestral portal encases you in molten armor when you travel through it. The summoned cool. Karui ancestor rallies you to battle and honestly seems to have an unhealthy obsession with combat. Go forth and conquer. Ever want to practice Ooh. running away from volatiles? The gunpowder foot attachment straps explosives to your legs, dispersing <laughs> lit gunpowder behind you. Be careful, you can only outrun it for so long before it catches up. <laughs> no downtime. The Enchanted Havoc Pack series also has six exclusive microtransactions. The Parrot of Exile pet parrots your exile. <laughs> or just let cooking? it speak for yeah. itself. It would be wrong to do that here. Wrong, wrong. I need more mana. Mana, wrong. Drinking from the bottled storm jade flask encases you in a surging tornado, churning up the ground in your wake. Why if you stand perfectly cooking? still while wearing the enchanted armor set, it will attract butterflies to flutter around you. Be careful not to disturb them. Sick of high-fiving giant purple appendages? The Ritualist's Breach Ring visually transforms breaches you find into occult summoning circles. Huh, the Enchanter's cool. Crafting Bench replaces the normal crafting bench in your hideout with a suite of tools fit for a master artisan. That looks sick. The various crafting stations burst into life as you use them. If you've ever wanted to remind your character who's really in charge, the Puppeteer's <laughs> back attachment has you covered. It truly is the sinister presence pulling the strings. These new packs are available right now at pathofexile.com slash purchase. Purchases like these directly fund the ongoing development of Path of Exile 1 and 2. Meanwhile, the Forge and Gemling packs leave the store forever and watch the Crucible League, so now's your last chance to purchase them. Thank you for your continued support. I would buy a we're lot more if it was less tied After to One that, Piece. We'll post the full patch notes for yeah, Path of Exile yeah. Crucible.
As we approach release next week, our community team will post Crucible's challenges, information on how to update your item filters, more skill gem details, and information on how to prepare for Crucible's launch. So a different kind of crafting on league, release then. weekend, we expect to launch the new mystery box yeah. and this season's Kerrix Vault Pass, which can be purchased with points and has a new free and track. A different available. kind of boss event too. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Oh, I hate today. that it's a Mythos. Checking out Path of Exile oh, Crucible. Really cute, we can't wait to forge some powerful Good weapons with you next week. Good on, Mike. Is that your email? Shortly, so please get your questions ready. Yeah, Ruthless Uber event is fucked. You're gonna have to meet me in the video. <laughs> but seriously, it's, that's really, 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 really hard. I don't even have a problem with that. It's just, they focused so hard on saying it was gonna be a side project and stuff. I feel like that really goes against that when their main boss kill event for a league. I didn't mind, like, I was like, oh, at the end of the league, we'll throw in some Ruthless events for those that want it. But, like, this is the only way to get that for a lot of people. So they're forcing them to play Ruthless. I think that's awful. Do I have to play Ruthless shit? I don't even know if it's possible though. I, I don't I don't think I'm gonna do it. I hate like with no memory ability, I hate it. I don't even know if it's what possible. What do you have to do? Kill Eater? And Exarch, right? Right. Is it Eater and Exarch and Uber? It just ruins my fun for the game. I don't like. think it's possible. I, of course it's possible. I suppose I always say it's not possible, and then it is possible. Yeah. I just, well, I guess I don't think I can do it. <laughs> I think you can do it. I don't know, it sounds fun. I don't want to do it. I've seen, um... I, just, I would actually enjoy Ruthless if it had movement abilities. I, I've seen people do it in, do regular quest exact in Eater, and it's very difficult. And yeah. that's quest, that's not even regular. And that's regular, not even uber. I don't know, it's a, it's a pretty massive grind. Ben will do it in a week? No, not a week. If he does it in a week, I, I mean, no. I'd love to see him try. Oh, yeah, I would love to see it too. <sighs> I don't mean that as in he won't do it because he will do it, but like, a oh, fucking, I mean, I'd love to see him do it because holy shit. Dude. 10 to 20 days, I think. <laughs> fucking, you know how little gear you get, chat, in Ruthless? I don't know, man. It's just so time intensive to, to grind. Jesus. Yeah, someone said two weeks. I think, I think. Oh, I have time to go to the bathroom, don't I? Yeah, just take your thing off. Are you sure, Chad, you don't want to hear me pee? They do.